laying track and points and then trying to paint and weather them so that we can match modern concrete sleeper track to the old wooden sleeper points was never going to be easy. Anyway, this is how I've got on. Hi, welcome back to Chatham Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And in this video, I thought we'd take a look at securing track to our layout and how we might best do that. And also how we would blend concrete track running into um, wooden sleepered point track, if that makes any sense, because that's probably about as hard as it can get. So what are our options? Now, I think it would be fair to say that one of the first things to consider before we start laying paint on track is actually what environment are we working in? I mean, for starters, what season is it? Well, Chadwick is set in midsummer. So there are lush green fields. The trees are in full leaf. But of course, that isn't the only choice. I mean, you might choose to have your layout in a frosty winter scene or snow laden or of course something totally different you might it might just be um, a clay works so obviously everything would be covered in clay dust or a brickworks or a coal facility but once you've decided on the environment that you're going to model then you can move on so having decided on a midsummer layout well, what's that got to do with the color of the track well actually quite a lot I've done a fair bit of research lately in a local railway station and I've been down there with a the camera and I have found that in these dank winter times it hasn't necessarily been raining but all the concrete track is very very dark because it's wet and damp and when you view that concrete track running into wooden sleepered points or of course if you're across the pond turnouts then the colours are almost absolutely identical. It's only in the, when the fine weather and bright sunshine that you get the contrast and then you can see that the concrete sleeper track is actually a different shade than the wooden. But in all honesty, in the real world, what are those colours? Well, whatever colour you think it is, it's certainly not these colours produced by Pico. Now this is standard Pico Code 100 track. Obviously it's Code 100 concrete sleepers and Code 100 wooden sleepered, I think they're medium radius turnouts, or as we say here, points. And I've been to many an exhibition and looked at layouts and think, God, this is so difficult to get this transition and the weathering right. And I, my heart really goes out for N-scale modellers because in N-gauge it is absolutely it's, it's appalling trying to get these colours to match. So we've seen what it is when they come out of the box, but let's have a look back in the real world at some examples. Now, last summer I went down to Buckfastley at a preserved railway and couldn't help but notice these wooden sleepers. These ones here are quite well decayed but when you get into the point here you can see that they've been renewed at some stage. Most of these sleepers are obviously they've dried out in the sunshine but they do look quite sort of sun bleached as it were and if you look underneath the DMU uh, the track before it, you can see there are actually concrete sleepers rather than wood but the colours are very similar. Now please excuse this class 66 as it thunders through with a uh, a tour train where a tornado had sort of broken down in Temple Meads. But the point is, when we look at the tracks here, obviously the down line which the 66 was on seems darker than the up line. And also, now you can see with the cable troughing on the right hand side, which sort of um, adds interest and a little bit of uh, the growth going on there. And looking over onto the left hand side, you can see a dark grey sort of pathway going up and this pathway is known as the cess and in the olden days let's say that's where the permanent way staff used to work their way along with their hammers checking on all the wooden wedges um, but this photograph does show the difference in tones now here in castle carey station it's worth pointing out that they changed five of these concrete sleepers and did a bit of re-ballasting 
again adding a bit more interest. Here you can see the two, two different colours of the track themselves. Sorry, excuse the A4 trying to get through. This is the Union of South Africa. But I believe that the, the line that the train isn't on, as it, the, the down line, she's on the up, is the lines that the rails have been changed and this a fresh rust, whereas on the rails nearer to us, um, that's an older line and it's more sort of sleeper, grimy, as it were. Now, once the train had got out of the way and I was able to fly over the tracks, I brought the drone back towards where the points were. And now hopefully you can see that on the down line on the right hand side, you can't see the edges of the right hand sleepers. They're absolutely buried in ballast. And then when we turn our attention now to the point itself, obviously you can see that it's, a, it's, a, it's got wooden sleepers. But it's the contrast really between the tracks above the point as it leads into it and the wood themselves. And you can see now that this contrast is nowhere near um, our, how we see it in modelling form. I mean, it, it tends to be so stark, the differences of between, let's say, the Pico Code 100 concrete sleepers and then you go into a point. So this is a standard that we shall try and fail to replicate. So first things first, we need to get our track glued onto our baseboard. Now, just um, to save time, what I have done is I've already glued on two millimetre thick uh, cork track bed onto uh, this little board here. And um, yeah, just glued it down with sort of um, neat PVA is what I use, sort of what's that white wood glue. And here's the tracks are all on here, ready to go. Now, how do you, how do you secure track to your, to your uh, you, to your track bed and onto your layout. Well, I, in my mind, there are three ways of doing it. You can pin it, you can screw it, or you can glue it. Now, you can use track pins, which means drilling little holes in your track and driving them through or on the edges of sleepers. But on this particular concrete sleeper track, they are extremely noticeable. So the answer to me is, dun 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 dun, Copy decks. Now, if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know all about this stuff. And if you're a man of a certain age, you'll recognise the smell. <laughs> it smells of fish and it kind of brings back childhood memories at school. So that's what I use. I tend not to pin um, or screw. If it's in, a, in a, uh, an inconspicuous area, such as, you know, a tunnel or whatever, then I like to use Pico screws. That's Pico, P-I-K-O. Drill a little hole in the sleeper and screw them down. Because that way, when you come to move them, when it's quite regular really isn't it when you change your mind it's easy to do so how do you use copy decks well copy decks um, you paint it onto one side of the porous surfaces or if it's non-porous you put it to both sides sadly one side is porous and the other side isn't you leave for 20 minutes and then stick them in place and you're good to go and if you need to get it up it's not that difficult with a modeling knife you can get underneath the sleepers you can lift them up um, pull it out no problem at all just be very careful around the frogs of points because you've got a frog wire going down there and obviously clearly in this area you've got your um, your actuating arm coming up from underneath so that's what I shall do I shall move these off to to one side and paint some of the copy decks on here now the points I'm using these are used points I've already used these before and you can see where the copy decks residue is on there so all I'm going to do is paint this stuff on without getting it on my new polo shirt dum, 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 dum. and you can see how this stuff will go it's a piece of cake really um, anyway so I'll get back to you when in 20 minutes time we're ready to put the two together well 20 minutes has passed by so all we need to do is drop this into place it's all gone nice and tacky connect up these fish plates before the stuff all bonds together and then hopefully we should be good to go mm. and you can feel it pull it down as it were so there we are a quick look along the edge bit of a blob there And we're good to go. 
So now all I need to do is a natural thing for any good railway modeler, and that is put on his collection of books. Right, I'll see you in an hour or so. Well, actually, it's not an hour later, it's now the following day, and I've changed my top because today's paints day, so I've got an older um, polo shirt out that was supplied for me by Simon. Simon, thank you very much. Um, so I don't use my new ones when the risk increases, let's say. I came back to the railway room last night and did a little bit of um, testing, so I thought I'd show you the results of those. Now, um, I did some dry brushing and I thought I'd mention with my brushes I use um, this thing from um, Hobby Zone is one of my little sort of brush stands and it's ideal then because you don't lose or damage your brushes and that's what I use. Um, oh and there should be a link to it up here. So what did I come back up the studio and do? Well I came back up and tried out three um, washes and these washes are the brown dark from Humbrol, and there's the result of that one. This one here, which is a track wash from Ammo Mig, there, and this one here from AK Interactive is a, a grey neutral wash, and hopefully you can see them against the original piece of Pico, uh, what do you call it, concrete track. Now in this little stretch of video, besides seeing pigeons and squirrels, you can see the difference in the tones between the concrete sleepers and the wooden sleepers. So it will give you a feel for what's kind of right and what's wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. But of course there is no right and wrong because you can go to any piece of railway in the country and find different effects of the weather. Now I find that older concrete sleeper track tends to look more brown because of brake dust and all the rest of the sort of detritus that gets kicked up on the railway so it tends to have a little bit of a brownish tinge. If of course it's fresh then it will be more of a pure concrete look. Um, if it's in the middle then I tend to think it's got more of this grey look from this one here from um, what was it Ammo Mig was it? No sorry from AK Interactive. Now to that end what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this example here on the concrete track of our a little um, test diorama. That of course takes us on to the wooden sleeper track and I put, toyed with many things last night. I was here with with Sienna and all, all sorts of stuff um, trying to do some tests and I've actually come up with a result from Tamiya or Tamiya, Tamiya if you're posh, um, and it's Tamiya Khaki. So what I shall do in a moment is we'll get a, a piece of wooden sleeper track out and show you what I've um, achieved with that. Now the three washes were enamels. But this time we're going to switch to acrylics. Acrylics are non-toxic so you don't have the same sort of issues. And as I mentioned we're using this Tamiya Khaki and it's XF49. And I've got a, a sort of a cheapy um, size 10 brush from Revel here and all I intend to do is put it in there and then basically dry brush um, it onto the tops of the rails. I'm not trying to paint the rails in its entirety but just give it the feeling of the colour. So what we'll do is all, all I'm trying to do is just to give it a, a little dry brushing, a bit heavy there I must admit. And thin it down a bit. So we've got a very light film of paint on this area. Okay, so we've got the tones of the um, brown plastic coming through and we've got a, a feeling of the colour of the timber. Right, I need to now wait 10 minutes and then we we'll do another bit of dry brushing with white uh, to bring out or to accentuate the, um, the contours of the plastic rails. Well, 10 minutes has now passed and it's time to start thinking about the, um, the white highlights. And I'm using from Vallejo and it's Vallejo um, 70. 
951 white, you'll be surprised. And I like the, these little white, uh, these little containers here that I use from porridge pots when I go away on a job. And all I do then is obviously we need to get this <laughs> white paper with white height. What could go wrong here? Right. And then just gently dry brush onto here. Nope, made a complete pickle of this, haven't I? Far too, far too much. Let me get that off. <laughs> That's kind of affected us after that. Right, let's try that again. So just a nice, gentle dry brushing. Here we go, it's better. Onto the rail tops. I will rub that again, that seemed to work quite well. And you can see now the fibre of the of the tracks themselves. You can see the, the, the lines that were um, part of the mould when the this track was produced. Right, so now hopefully you can see what I'm after. So we've got a the brownie khaki sort of tinge with the white highlights. Now when I do this on the on the other uh, layout, what I shall do. Um, is if it looks a bit too bright, I shall just use a dark wash just to bring it back down again. But I think that's about right. So from here on, we go to the diorama. Well, here's the diorama that we glued down yesterday. And as you can see, the track is all firmly held in place. And the great thing about it is there's not a nail or a screw or tack or whatever in sight. So good to go. Now, rather than... Uh, <laughs> do all this in front of you. I'm just going to do a couple of these um, concrete sleeper tracks with that grey uh, wash from AK Interactive. So we shall do those little bits there and then after lunch I shall come back and we'll attack the sleepers on the points. Right, let's get to it. So as I mentioned before, it is just a simple grey wash and it's a case of whapping it on there really and then thinning it out with paper towel once you've got it established in the areas where you need it. A simple wash, nothing really could be simpler. But when it dries, like say, it does dry that lovely mid-grey. And hopefully you can see now as we start to lose the shine and the difference between the wooden track as this little piece here becomes a little bit more realistic. I think that's the guts of it in place really. Haven't missed too much out. And hopefully my hands are not completely in the way of ruining the, the shot for you. Okay. The great bit about this is if you make a mistake it doesn't matter because it's so easy to put it right. Now what I do now is get some, some uh, blue roll and start to bring it back off again. And you can sort of see it in its more, its grey glory as it were. In the next to no time, we get in a situation where you think, yeah, that's enough. And it gives you the, the kind of look that you're after. And I think that is about right. So there we are in just the five or five or ten minutes, just um, it's like I said, a gentle wash over and then using a bit of uh, blue towel to mop up the, the excess as it were um, and try to make sure it's as even as possible. And it really has dulled down very well these concrete sleepers. Obviously when it's ballasted it will look great. So I'll leave that to dry and come back after lunch and then we'll start on these two. 
Well, I'm sure you'll be delighted to know that my lunch is now a distant memory and I'm ready to start on this. Now, I have trimmed off the little lugs that poke up at the top of the switch blades because um, they're for surface mounted point motors. I've cut off the two lugs from the other side, as I do with all my points, um, because again, they're for um, below surface Pico point motors. But I've left those two on there because they're useful for mounting dummy point motors. And I've also filled in the two little holes um, that were uh, used for securing this point in its previous life. So now it's just a case really of putting on some of this Tamiya and I'm not necessarily going to sort of dry brush it. I've been thinking about this and I'm going to put it on a little more thicker as it were and, uh, and then cut it back later once we've finished. So it's a case of more of a, of a wood finish really, bleached wood finish is what I'm after. This shouldn't take too long and I'll be back shortly. So it's pretty much the same routine as before really. I've gone on and put a, a little bit um, excess of paint on but then with a paper towel it's just to remo remove the excess and then blend it in. So you can still see some of the more earthy plastic colour coming through so it's not predominantly just solid khaki and I should just go and do the same with the next one. And one thing that I had forgotten to do which I've done now so better late than never and that's to insert a little bit of blue tack in between the point blades to stop paint going down there. If you get any down there it's not too hard to clean it out with a, a sort of a, a cotton bud and white spirit or whatever but try to keep these clean and then you won't have to do the work afterwards. So a bit of blue tack does the job nicely. Um, so it's not just, uh, you know, you could use a piece of tape, but I, I tend to use blue tack. Well, that's those two points painted um, and I think it looks OK. So we'll give it 10 minutes to dry and then we'll, bri brush, we'll dry brush over a little bit of white to bring out the detail. Well, I think that's had enough time to dry, so I'm just going to get some of this Vallejo white onto this little pad and then once I find my brush, there it is, have a little go at dry brushing this area. But instead of using a white piece of paper, we'll use a bit of blue this time, shall we? And see how we get on. Still a little bit thick, Charlie. Probably easier if I stand up. It's just trying to bring out the detail. That's better, but I need to get that other, just get some of that other paint off there. It shouldn't be too difficult. That's the beauty with acrylics really, isn't it? They do come off relatively easily. That's better. I think we'll stop there. I'm not too sure this is completely dry. We'll hold back there. Now the clock's rolled on a little bit more now and I'm able to carry on that little bit of white dry brushing and that seems to have gone in much better now as you can see. So that's just about complete really. So what do you do now before ballasting? Well I think it's time to paint the rails. So moving on to rail painting, what are our options? Well, if you're like me, you like to go to a lot of exhibitions. I sometimes look at some exhibits and go, a bit red those tracks, aren't they? They seem to be very, very bright red. 
but then perhaps you know rails are different you saw in the video earlier the downline um, was considerably not rustier but uh, it was an early rust as opposed to the deeper one on the, the line with the a4 on the uh, um, the upline it had sort of more sleeper grown to it so i thought i would invest in some rail right so this is as you know bullhead track left out in the rain for some years and get away it's rusty now just in case you don't like bullhead track i thought i'd go and get some flat bottom rail as well also been um, left out in the rain and now we can look at the sort of colors of these two if i turn it around that way and you can see you know what it is it's not really red at all is it um, but sleeper grime does have an impact now i've recently bought a tidy track track painter from woodland scenics and this is rusty rail number tt4581 if i can read upside down that's tt4581 and here's a little bit of rail that i treated myself to now hopefully you can see on the top camera the that it is quite similar to this to there so i thought i would give this a go so what's this little thing about well basically it's a tube of paint with a ball bearing in it or something and then on the end there's like a it's not a felt pad it's more like a wooden pad or but it's a fiber that's quite stiff and then you run it along the rail now i find there's a little snag with it in as much as when you run it along the rail it hits the chairs as you'd expect so you don't get such a smooth line but you run it one way and run it then run it back the other and it seems to do the job quite adequately if of course you don't like this sort of stuff and you are a rail painter then just use a fine brush and one thing that i found is that if you paint your rail in this sort of fashion then put your rest your brush on the other rail as you go along the inside rail because doing it like that at an angle you are all over the place so use a rest if you can of some description and you get a better feed some people paint their track after they've ballasted I don't because I've made such a mess of it in the past I tend to run the the rail painter along the track before I ballast in case you get any big blobs on the ballast then it's hard to get rid of it just seems just personal taste really you know so there we go right so I'll get the diorama back and we'll have a little blast with this gizmo so here we are with our little gizmo and as you rattle it and then you just poke it on a piece of paper a couple of times and um, the sort of pad goes into the pen and drags the paint down all straightforward now if I tip the diorama on its side then hopefully we can get some focus on here and if I just run this pen along this track hopefully you can see how it works couldn't be much easier really could it And if of course not enough comes out well you can always give it a second run it's the first time i've used it seems all right really but that's what it's all about isn't it we learn from each other in this hobby so uh anyway if you leave me to it and uh i'll hopefully show you the finished article well that's the rails painted so all i'm going to do now is i'm just going to put a black wash across these um, wooden sleeper tracks now just to dull those down a little bit and we should be just about ready to go just to take some of the the glare of the white away And this black wash here, this, well, this dark wash is just homemade stuff, really. It's made out of a, a very dark uh, grey paint with obviously a lot of thinners. Well, as they say, I think we're now in the final furlong. This looks a bit of a mess, to be perfectly honest. We've got the brown of the, of the board. We've got the light brown of the uh, cork. We've got the grey of the concrete track the brown of the points and we've got the sort of rust colour on the rails it all looks a bit of a mess but hopefully with a bit of ballast it will all look fine 
Now, my choice of ballast is Woodland Scenics Fine, Fine, not Medium, Fine Grey Blend. Apparently it's for N-Gage, but I always use it for 00 now. It's much more prototypical. Ugh, what a word. Um, yeah, uh, medium, sorry, fine, fine ballast grey blend is my weapon of choice. And I have one of these nifty little dispensers. And all I'm going to do now is pour into this dispenser some ballast. And rest assured, I'm not going to bore you to death with ballasting this. There should be a video just up here. And all I do then is open this little door and I pull this along. And as you can see, it dispenses ballast onto the rails and then I just shut the door on this when I get to the end and all I need to do really is tap the rails and the ballast will go in a little brush and we'll be good to go right see you in an hour or two well the ballast is now in place but it's not glued down and if I zoom in a little bit you can see the effect of the rail painter it really does bring out the colour well and also you can see the difference between the concrete sleepers and the wooden sleepers and the colours show up reasonably well. Well as you can see there is a colour difference um, between the wooden sleeper and the uh, concrete sleeper track and but I don't think the, the the contrast is quite what I'd hoped it would be. I'd hoped it would, it would come over a little darker um, so perhaps that uh, to me a khaki wasn't the best option or perhaps I should have gone for something a little more a little darker perhaps. What I've tried to stay away from with this video is the use of, of, air, of airbrushes because not everyone has an airbrush and not everyone can afford one or in fact need one. So what would I do from now on? Well from now from here what I would naturally do is glue all this ballast down with a 50-50 mix of um, PVA and water, obviously with a, a dash of dish soap as they call it, which is what we would call washing up liquid. And then once the ballast is all in and hardened after a couple of days, then you can look to use weathering powders. Now some people would use weathering powders before you ballast and I don't really think that's effective because at the end of the day when you pour your ballast on and then you glue, you wash your weathering powders away really. Um, but you do need to add some variety. Now in these previous photographs you can see that there is very little contrast across this new concrete style track and when we go back to that point that we looked at originally you can see that the difference between that point and these isn't that substantial actually but it is noteworthy. Now if you're a modern day kind of um, modeler and you're all concrete track perhaps one of the things you ought to think about is or just spraying or cleaning or painting up all your point, your wooden points into concrete and actually do a colour match so they look as if they are concrete and then you don't have this difficulty. I mentioned previously that I do feel for N-gauge modellers. I think they have a rough time because, I mean, ballasting N-gauge points is bad enough, let alone trying to get colour matches. But there we go. Hopefully you found it a little bit on the interesting side. It's certainly been a decent challenge to do and of course to research it with all the, the photos and drone footage that you've seen. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I did this video um, on a request from a patron so hopefully um, he'll find it somewhat enlightening and if you um, would like me to try something like that and you're a patron then don't hesitate to drop me a line. And if you're not a patron, then there's the link. Perhaps you can join me and help support the channel. There, of course, is the um, subscribe button. And there should be a video here and here. And I'll see you all in two weeks' time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.